What up campers? This week we're talking about the pros and the cons of hybrid travel trailers. Welcome to Why We Work. If this is your first time joining us, get subscribed. We're all about appreciating life and uh, doing it in our hybrid travel trailer and on the central coast where we live. So hybrids aren't for everybody. There are some downsides. You know, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the cons and bad things that we found while we've been camping in our hybrid. And then some of the pros, which we think there are a lot as well. And, uh, and for some folks, I think the hybrids can work really well. One of the things to keep in mind is that we were coming from a pop-up. And so a lot of these things are from the perspective of a pop-up. A lot more uh, modern amenities, you know, things like TVs, lots more storage. Of course, that critical bathroom and shower, uh, which was the main draw for us to go to a full hard-sided trailer. Um, but there are some downsides relative to travel trailers, and we talked about some of those as well. A year in, we're still really excited with the rig that we have. Actually, we'll probably do a, another video where we do a kind of year later type of review on what we think of our trailer and some of the issues that uh, we've run into and some of the things that we still love about it. So, uh... first one has to be uh, in terms of setup time. Now for us, this one isn't a huge deal, but I do want to point this out because when you talk to other folks who've owned hybrids, that's one of the things that you hear is that the setup time and specifically when it comes to the bunks, it is one extra step that you have to do. You got to both put the bunks down from the outside and then you go in and put the bunks uh, out with a bar so that the full canvas is popped out. So Easy enough, all you do is pop it open, pop it open on this side, you see it ready to from the clips, and then it just pops on down. You can see we leave our Reflectix in. I know a lot of people don't do it, but we haven't had any issues with it yet. The rest of the setup happens inside. So we pull out our little shepherd's hook. And it's very easy to do. There's a, here we go, you guys ready? Whoops, didn't work. I'm gonna cut that out, pop it in, and then clip it in here. Ta-da, ready for the mattress to slide in. All good to go, that is literally the setup. That's the full amount of setup to get the bed going. What do you think? The setup time? Is it a big deal? Pain in the butt to uh, do the bunks and stuff? I wouldn't be worried about it. The setup time really isn't that long for us. We wash our sheets and pull down all the blankets anyway off of the beds. So you can see it's an extra step, but uh, it's not a killer. One thing for setup time though, is that if you want to upgrade your mattress, which you probably want to upgrade, you can see the old one on top. And those ones fold in half to make it super easy to store them. But when you have the upgraded mattress like we got, then we have to pull it off every time, set it over the dinette, and then move it into the bunk ends. So that is definitely an extra step for the hybrids that you wouldn't have to do if you had a hard cider, right? Number two. Okay, next up is extreme weather. Okay, hybrids are probably not gonna be the best option if you're into extreme weather conditions when it's really, cold or really hot the beds are underneath canvas and so uh, at the end of the day it's just not as well insulated it's not as well protected from those for us this isn't a huge deal breaker because one uh, we live in california and the weather stays pretty bearable all year round uh, and two there's things you can do with pop-up gizmos the pugs um, and our buddies ready to Roo have a great channel on the pugs if you want to check that out I'll link it below uh, but basically there's ways that you can kind of circumvent that or 
The other thing is a lot of folks in the East Coast or more harsh climates end up winterizing their trailers no matter what, even if they have really big fifth wheels and things like that. So uh, that is something to point out. For us, again, it's not a deal breaker and hasn't been a huge problem, but we have been in places where it's super hot and uh, yeah, it's uh, the AC doesn't work as well, I think, as it would in a full hard-sided trailer. The other thing is if it's really bad, you can just turtle up, right? Yep, so turtle up is basically um, putting the beds up so that your bed is fully closed. Using the dinette or the couch as your sleeping quarters. Now obviously this depends on the size of your family and how much of the beds you guys use. On a regular basis for us, we've got our two little kids on the front bunk and we're on the bed bunk. And so it makes it really easy when we do turtle up, we can pop the kids on the couch and we can be on the dinette. Um, just once again, the consideration, if you do get that full size mattress, the bigger mattress, and the fact that we have to keep it on the dinette, it's going to be a little tight if we turtle. Yeah, and when you're turtled, I think then it makes it just into a straight up hard sided trailer. So both your AC is going to get a lot colder and your heater is going to warm it up a lot more. The other thing though, and I think this is something unique to hybrids, right, is the condensation. Yeah, so we've, we've noticed um, when we come back from camp trips as little as one night up to a couple days is whenever you do get ready to close the bunks back up, when we move the mattresses, we've seen that there's, it's, it's not just damp, in some cases it's flat out wet underneath the mattresses. But it's something that's important to note. We're actually trying to figure out what the best way is to keep the condensation to a minimum. We do keep our screens cracked. The, the, the windows cracked open, so I know a lot of people said that helped. We do do that and do keep the heat or the fans on. For some reason, we're still getting a lot of buildup. So we are worried that even though we are wiping down the bottoms of everything, that we're still going to get mold or mildew. So we'll be looking into, especially with the new foam mattress, so we'll definitely be looking into putting it into some sort of a waterproof bag um, to see if that helps. Yeah, so just another thing to keep in mind for those extreme conditions and, and also for setup time is that you're going to want to just combat the mold and keep those wiped down because uh, water, I think, is the number one enemy in a trailer. Number four. So this one's actually kind of a pro and a con, and we'll talk about it in the pro section as well, but uh, the, the noise, right, is that when you are in those bunk ends, you can hear uh, a lot more. It can be a pro if you're in a killer spot with killer noises, but uh, if you got those loud neighbors or noisy kids or people out partying late at night, right? The kid's waking up early or, or you're in a campground and somebody turns on their generator at 7 o'clock in the morning, you're gonna hear it. Yeah, so I think when you are when you go to the dark side and have that full hard-sided trailer, you can kind of both keep your own noises contained uh, and also prevent those noises from coming in. If you've got some really pesky neighbors, then you can kind of shut yourself inside and here you don't have that option but number five the other con and i guess it depends on how big your family is uh, but is the privacy thing for us again that's not that big of a deal kids are still really young they can still watch a show or watch a movie and you know we can just shut the curtain if we want to sleep in but there's definitely um privacy is a consideration privacy is a consideration number six all right last con climbing over each other. The way that the bunk ends are set up, you're laying kind of uh, side to side across the bunk end. And with little ones that call you in the middle of the night, it gets hard. Um, you'll have to constantly climb over one another. Or if you gotta go to the bathroom, right? You're laying there, you get up in the middle of the night. So again, for us, it's not a huge problem. You know, you end up having to get up to get the kids anyway, so you're up. But uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, you know, if you have to get up a lot during the middle of the night or whatever the case may be that uh, Pick the you might... side that's closest to the like trailer and not the furthest back side. Yeah, the way the beds are oriented is climbing over each other is going to be a thing. Alright, so let's talk about some of the pros. Number one. Okay, so first pro I think has to be the, the weight factor. Pound for pound when you're towing. Um, because you're in a hybrid, those bunk ends are outside and it's literally just a, a piece of, of the siding, basically, that folds down. 
you end up saving a ton of weight by not having beds that are constructed and fully wood framed out uh, inside your trailer. So the vast majority of your trailer, the, the shell part is like devoted to your living space. And, uh, and that was something that really appealed to us. We were limited on our towing capacity because we had a 4Runner at first. And so a hybrid is a good option for folks who want some of those modern conveniences but don't want to go over 5,000 pounds uh, from a towing perspective. And, and again, you still get that bathroom, the kitchen, all that you know modern convenience without really uh, breaking the bank on your towing capacity. Number so. two. The next one's just having that camping feel, right? So you get to hear those noises. Nadia. Um, we gets... talked about it a little bit in the con section as well and mentioned we'll bring it up in the pros section and this is definitely one of them. We enjoy the sounds of nature and wanting to be doing a lot more boondocking. It makes sense for us. Um, the hybrid just makes so much sense on so many levels. Laying in bed, hearing those birds chirping, the river running and things like that. As much as it can be a con if you're in a big, busy uh, RV park, I think when you're just out boondocking in the middle of nowhere, that's something that is a real bonus. Because again, you get that nature and camping vibe that you always loved when you were back in your tent. Number three. The next pro, obviously, and the main reason why we upgraded is for those modern conveniences. Having that full bathroom with a shower and a toilet that works. I think, you know, when we were first moving up from a tent into the pop-up, we're like, oh my gosh, this thing has so much convenience with the stove and, you know, had some cabinets and things like that for storage but uh, as we have two kids and and things get a little bit more tricky we really wanted that bathroom and in addition just having that kind of like i said tv microwave for those quick meals you know if they just want some mac and cheese or whatever it is um, having all those things it just gives you that extra comfort when you're camping and makes you look forward to it i think uh, that much more So this one's one that was a, a con as well, but I also throw it in the pro, and it's really a pro when you think about it from the perspective of a pop-up, but it's the setup time. So even though you have to fold down those bunk ends and it's a little bit more maybe than what you would do just in a, a hard-sided travel trailer, um, it's really easy to set these things up. We got one of those um, sockets for the scissor jacks, and so literally you get there, unhook, you fold down those beds, and you saw how easy it was. You hit those stabilizers with a cordless drill um, and you're done. So it's much, much easier than a, a tent to set up or even a pop-up. And so uh, for us, it's really nice to be, you know, pulled up to camp and within 20, 30 minutes, um, you're all set up and ready to go. In fact, we made a 10-step process and you can watch that video, but I think the whole thing took about 10, 15 minutes until we were, you know, again, relaxing and drinking that beer and appreciating life. Number five. And I think the last pro of the hybrid is just that they're super fun, right? We've gone on, I think like 10 or 12 different trips, about two, 3,000 miles this year. And uh, it gets you out there having the blast, making those memories with the folks who uh, matter a little bit. No, <laughs> the ones who matter the most. And so, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, right? That's what our channel's all about. That's what we're trying to make our life all about. And uh, these things definitely help you get out there and make that happen. So. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching and hey, if you like this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, consider subscribing and uh, we'll see you on the next adventure, right?